Okay, so in order to set up the Winkler titration that we're going to run the error analysis on, I'm just going to show you a quick rundown of how this setup works, and it's pretty simple. Um, basically, here we have a very, very full water sample, and we are going to add um, a little bit of solution to that. But before we do, we're going to get rid of a little of the water by letting it overflow a little bit. So that way we don't spill out all the stuff. So we're going to add about eight drops of this solution, which has manganese and iodine in it. Good. And then to that, we're going to add another eight drops of this solution too. Uh, that adds a little bit of base. And iodine. Oh, it looks like the iodine is in this one. So as we're doing that, the oxygen that was in there is reacting with the manganese and that base in order to form a brown precipitate. So we're now going to flood this over. We don't want any air to be trapped in there. And now we need to let this mix. So unfortunately that's not terribly easy. We're going to use a little bit of the density gradient here to get this to move. But you can see this forming. And that is the brown precipitate that the oxygen is forming with the manganese. And what we're next going to do is we're going to go ahead and dissolve that, once we're kind of confident that this is mixed thoroughly, by adding sulfuric acid. And what that's going to do is that's going to form the triiodide that we can go ahead and do a titration. So this is concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, we want to be careful with this. It can get very hot, and we don't need to add any more than we need. Uh, and sometimes that'll drip right out of the thing because it's not always viscous enough. And again, we want this to overflow throughout the air bubble, ideally. Let's see here. So you can see that change a little bit as it's starting to dissolve some of the free precipitate. Um, but we want that to kind of do that. Uh, we want that to mix in a way gets that sulfuric acid to dissolve all of that. So what that's eventually going to look like is what we have here, where that has all been dissolved. And that's what we're going to do our titration on, is this sample that I prepared earlier. So here we've measured out 20 milliliters, plus or minus 0.1, um, that we just prepared. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to this flask. Now the yellow color you're seeing there is from the triiodide that we formed. So we're now going to do titration with that, and in order to start that, we need to take a look at what our initial reading is. And so here's our burette, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that on the camera, so we're at a slight angle here, but we are just under 18, so 18 is this line here, here's the solution. So I would read that as 18.22. So 18.22, so go ahead and write that down and make a note. And what we're now going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually start doing the titration here. Now, currently, there's a decent yellow color that we can see pretty well in here, and we can start with a little flash of this. This is going to be a little bit before it gets to a point where we start to lose that color. So as we swirl that, we're going to see that yellow color persisting. So a good way that can be helpful for that is just to have any white background behind that so you can kind of see that a little better. All right, let's go ahead. So we're going to eventually mix a little bit of starch with this, but if we do that too soon, then it's going to irreversibly bind with this. So we want to get that pale color to kind of go away a little bit, whereas right now we're still seeing quite a bit of yellow. So now we're at a very faint yellow. We can now go ahead and add our starch. And when we go ahead and mix that, we're going to see that blue color. We're already pretty close to the end point there. So now we can kind of go drip by drip.
So I would say at that point our blue color is now gone, so we finished our titration. At this point we want to look and see what our final measurement is. And we're just above here. So when I'm reading that at eye level, I am getting just under 32. Um, between 32.0 and 32.1, I would say that's 32.09 milliliters. And so now we're going to go through and show how to do the air propagation on a titration I did earlier. And then I'm going to leave this as an exercise on how to do the propagation for air for this particular titration that we just did. So I'm going to walk you through the initial measurements that I made uh, prior to the titration that I just did. And, and I'm going to do that to show you how to do an air propagation for an internal assessment for the IB. Uh, but then I'm going I'm to also put down the information in the description of the measurements we just took. And if you want to do that working, I'll also put what I got for the final answer with error for that. So our initial urate rating for not the one that we just did, but the one that I did prior to that with the first sample was 5.50 milliliters. Uh, the final was 18.82. So for the error for that, there are many things you can put. But the one that I do is I just take the final significant digit and I do plus or minus one of that. So for this, I would do plus or minus 0 0.01 milliliters, plus or minus 0 0.01 milliliters. And then likewise, I would do that as well for this one here with the thiosulfate concentration. Uh, we're gonna say that that's plus or minus 0 0.01 molarity. Now, ideally, this would be calculated if you had prepared the solution yourself. So if you had actually done the measurement of the mass and the volume of solution, you would have errors for those that you could factor in and make that. So it's possible this is even larger than this, um, but we don't, we don't know. So we're going to go with that as a somewhat reasonable. It's probably between 0 0.0024 and 0 0.0026. That seems like a valid range. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how much the volume of the thiosulfate solution was actually added in order to get to the end point. So for that, we need to do a calculation. For that, we just take this and we subtract this from it. And so that comes out to 13.32. Now, as far as sig figs go, for our sig figs there, because we're doing a subtraction, we're gonna go based on place. So this is gonna be our final sig fig. But for our error, switch color. For our error there, we're gonna combine those two errors. So when you add or subtract error, you have to combine them. So you would combine those amounts, 0 0.02 milliliters. And that makes sense in the sense that this could be off by 0 0.01, either 5.49 or 5.51, and this could be 18.81 or 18.83. So the sum of those two could end up being, you could have 13.30 all the way to 13.34. So therefore we've doubled our amount there. Now, to do the next part, we're gonna go ahead and turn this into moles. What we're gonna do next is we're going to figure out what percent 0.02 is of 13.32. So we're gonna take 0.02, uh, divide by 13.32, multiply by 100, and this comes out to be 0.15%. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this, and 0.01 divided by 0 0.0025 ends up being 4%. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our calculation. Switch color there. So we have this, we're gonna put that into liters. So we have 0 0.01332 liters times 0 0.0025 molar moles per liter of the thiosulfate. So if I multiply that, 2 times 0.0025, I get 3.33 times 10 to the minus fifth. So we got one, two, three, four zeros, three, three, three. And that is moles of that thiosulfate. And we'll go ahead and just do the error at the very end. So now, the second part, for the Winkler titration, we know that there are four moles of thiosulfate reacting for every one mole of oxygen that was present. And so we're gonna go ahead and divide that by four, and that comes out to be 0.0000833 moles of O2. And I'm gonna multiply that by 32 grams per mole, molar mass of that, get that into grams. And we can go ahead and take that one step further and put that into milligrams. 
uh, where it'd be 0.266 milligrams of O2. So let's assume we're gonna stop there and that's our answer. We're not gonna put this into a concentration. So at that point, we would then go through and say, okay, well, how many sig figs should this have? Well, we started with four here and two here. So since we're doing multiplication division here, we should be rounding this to sig figs. The next thing we need to do though, is we need to figure out the error. And so for that, we're going to combine these two amounts. So we have 4.15% error for this calculation. So we're going to multiply 0.27 times that 0.0415, and that comes out to be an error of 0.0112 milligrams. So this value will be plus or minus 0.01. Now when we get to this next part, we're going to round that because of the number of sig figs here. So we don't want to go too far beyond the place of this. It would be acceptable to include the extra one there, um, but we're just going to go ahead and cut that there to keep it consistent with how we reported the error up here. Now the final thing is, once you've done that error propagation, it is valuable to go and look, where is most of my error coming from, and how can I change that? So a 4% error for a concentration is pretty large. So if I had used a more concentrated uh, amount of this, that would have helped, although in that case, I would have had a smaller amount of this, so this concentration I'm sorry, this error percentage would potentially go up. And so you look at the trade-off there and go, well, is there a way for me to get this to be more precise with, with smaller error without trading off with this? And that would probably involve some kind of serial dilution method in order to make this a little bit more precise.